Hi, and welcome to Power of the Network. I'm your host, Tim Locker, Vice President of Broadband here at CBM. You know, this has been such a great journey for me and such an opportunity to learn uh, so much about different things, and today's no different. Uh, today we have uh, Dan Brewer with uh, Wilson Logistics. He's a long customer of ours that we've been working with in several different places over the years, and, and he's got a tremendous background in the world of IT uh, one of the smartest folks I've ever met, and I'm so looking forward to uh, learning from him today. So please join us. Dan, welcome to the show. We appreciate you joining us. Um, you know, taking so much time out of your day to be with us, it, it means a lot to us. So thank you. Uh, it's always it's always fun for me to have a customer on the show and uh, to kind of show show people a little bit about what we do, but also get some perspective from, you know, an end user and how things are working in their world. So uh, I know you've got a ton of expertise and you've been in the IT uh, industry for a long time. Uh, why don't you start by telling us, you know, your story? How did you get, how did you end up at, at uh, you know, Wilson Logistics and, and tell us some of your accomplishments over your career? Okay. And thank you for having me. Uh, I really started out as a contractor doing low voltage cabling. Uh, and I was a contractor for a utility local in Springfield. Okay. Uh, that company decided that they would start doing fiber broadband and quit buying circuits from AT&T, Southwestern yep. Bell. Yep. And uh, I was already there as a contractor. They decided to hire me to okay. start that. So then we started SpringNet, which was a Metro Ethernet provider in yep. the Southwest Missouri region. Uh, that would have been back in 95 when we did that. And it was, um, that was project was kind of way ahead of its time at, it, at it that was. point, we, wasn't it? We started, we started in 95, and it was kind of funny. People would, you'd talk to them about native Ethernet, and it's like, we can give you 100 meg across town. And they would go, was well, that two DS3s? Or, and it's yeah. like, no, it's just native Ethernet. And their eyes would kind of glaze over. And yeah. you'd leave them alone, and the next day they would call back, and they're like, well, if I could have native Ethernet at this broad, then I could do this, and I could centralize. And it was a real exciting time, but yeah. it was something that nobody else was doing at the time. Yeah, that's awesome. And then and then in around— well, What did that process take? How long How long was were you involved in that project? Uh, I was with SpringNet for 15 years. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And we actually ended my last five years there. We did a underground data center. Uh, at the Springfield Underground, okay, and it is sixty-four thousand square feet of data center space. That's eighty-five feet underground in a in an old limestone mine. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and that one that was yeah. a really nice that was a nice project. Uh, and then from there, uh, the local one of the local healthcare systems, Cox Health, uh, decided that they needed to redo their infrastructure, and they hired me away to to do their director of technology position. Um, that is a six, six hospital system with about 116 facilities and about a hundred thousand square foot square miles. Oh, wow. Um, took us, uh, we redid every closet, every network piece, everything in every floor of every building. Uh, it took us about 14 years to architect that and put it through. Um, and the thing of that was that was nice in healthcare at the time because they were still, when I got there, they were behind the times doing a lot of paper charting, nurses did. Yeah. Um, I got to ride that curve to them to digitize everything in the public, in the EHR health records, okay, yeah. um, doing wireless networks for the infusion pumps, the ventilators, doing all the, all the patients were on the network at that point. Um, when I left, we had about 33,000 devices on that network. Oh, wow. What's the secret to managing that type of a network? I mean, that's a lot of information. That, that's a big, you really have to have a big view, a big overall view. You can get really wadded up in the details and then you get lost with what you're trying to do. Uh, the biggest thing with that is looking at the big picture and trying to be three steps ahead of the software folks that are trying to be on the cutting edge. So you're kind of barely hanging off the edge when you're doing that kind of stuff. Gotcha. Well, I mean, you talk about that, the technology changing so fast, if it takes 14 years to build that project, I mean, how many things changed in that in uh, that time? We had uh, I had a, a gentleman that took care of about thirty five hundred wireless access points, and when we would upgrade, by the time he would upgrade everything, we would be ready to upgrade again, and it was just yeah. a constant a constant churn 
to get through all of that. So that that kind of explains why it kind of took so long to get done because it's always you're it, kind of repeating. It did. Yeah. It, yeah. It really was, and it would change, and then the technology would change, and so you're trying to update something, and you would go back and update things again. Yeah. And it's just a constant, constant flux. Yeah. What's what uh, What's one of your biggest accomplishments? You think? Biggest accomplishment was probably SpringNet with being a startup. Yeah. Um, even when we would talk to the manufacturers, the manufacturers would not understand what we were trying to do because what we were doing, nobody else was at the time. And they would go, here's what, here's the product. And it's like, no, that's not what we want it to do. We want it to do this. And it took a long time to find manufacturers that would help us with their product to make it do what we were trying to do. And those were the ones that were more... Um, far sighted to realize that this is a whole new market for them to tap into. Yeah. So that uh, vision or forethought, I guess, if you will, where did that come from? Have you always been minded like that to look deeper than people normally I, can? I love new things. I love IT because IT is you wake up dumb every morning and you've got to learn more to be able to stay up with everything. Yeah. So it, it's really the challenge and in, in that of trying to do new stuff is what I really enjoy. What kind of challenges do you think, uh, like currently, what, what are some challenges that you're, that you're tackling? So the trucking industry is about 10 years behind the healthcare industry with digitizing everything. So, okay. so now we're riding that technology curve. I'm getting to do it again in the, in the logistics and trucking industry. Um, and that's moving from paper logs to electronic logs to monitoring the trucks, the cameras in the trucks. Um, and here lately, the first what we've been working on is drivers have downtime. Drivers used to get uh, a product called Epic View, and it's a satellite TV, direct TV essentially. Okay. And so then when they're off duty, they can watch TV. Now that the generations have changed, those guys don't watch TVs, they're on their PlayStations. Oh, sure, and, yeah. And so now instead of satellite TV in the trucks, uh, we were, I believe, the second fleet in the country uh, to start doing mobile data in the trucks. So now the trucks have mobile data for the drivers, and the drivers get on their PlayStations and play games after hours. So the trucks themselves are kind of like their own hotspot. They are. They're mobile, they're mobile data trucks, and we manage all of those. Um, managed to sign a, a reseller agreement with a cellular provider with a carrier. And so we're actually able to, to activate, deactivate, do everything. And we manage all of those, all of those things rather than using a Verizon or an AT&T end user store. We do it all ourselves and buy everything wholesale. Well, that's incredible. That's, that's very forward thinking. Uh, like I said, there's not too many people doing that, but what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of people doing that because just as you say, there's around what, 400 million trucks, 4 million trucks, I believe, yeah. out yeah. on the road. And uh, every one of them is a, is a new customer to be able to do the mobile data. So if I'm seeing a trend here, it's uh, you appreciate a good challenge. Yes. You dig your heels in, tackle the project, and uh, then you like another one. Yes. Uh, you know, exactly I kind of see that like, you know, a lot of people talk about goals and, you know, setting goals are great and it's a way to get to a certain point. But, uh, you know, my, in my experience, uh, sometimes you hit that goal and then there's almost a letdown. Like, right. Like what's next? Okay, we did this. Now what? Is that kind of been your kind pattern of a little you bit? Get used, when you get used to it, that's how, that's how it works. Uh, the last really cool thing that we were able to do, we moved to a new campus Mm -hmm. uh, built a new camp. We're building a new campus. Uh, it's 120 acres, 125 acres, uh, and it will be a destination for drivers. So we have an administrative building, and then we're doing a motel, a restaurant. We're doing paid parking for the trucks, and that'll be set up so that a, a driver can get on an app. He can pick a spot, get his spot. We'll send him a QR code. He pulls up to the gate, shows his QR code to the reader, and then it lets him in to park in his spot. Now is this, so this is at your, your new headquarters it, in that's, Stratford? That's what we're building. Stratford, Missouri? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, now is that for your truckers? That's, that's, or for, that's is that, for any. That's for that's any truckers. That's for truck. any truckers. Um, and we're going to do that at several other places also, but this is, this is where we're starting that at. Okay. Um, 
trying to get everything lined up, building a campus. We've got our administration building there, our training buildings there. We, we run our own training school, so we, we train our own drivers. So we take students. We're a independent CDL testing okay. facility. So we bring them in. We put them up. We put them up in a motel. We teach them how to drive the way we want them to drive. We get their CDL and put them in a truck. So, how big of a challenge is finding finding drivers? It's really tough. Uh, drivers driving is a is a unique thing. It has a really high turnover rate because if you're a CDL driver that's got a good record, you can get mad at something that we did. You can leave us, and the next day you're in somebody else's truck driving. Yeah. And so that happens a lot. So it's 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 really difficult. And that's one reason that's kept us doing well is we do train our own driver, uh, most of our own drivers. And so we're bringing in new people into the industry and we put them through school. They agree to drive for us. So is there a term with that? Like, if, OK, I'm going to put you through school and I've got to sign a contract for you. You, you do a, a certain time. OK. How do you keep that culture? So you you talked about, OK, a uh, you know, a driver could get mad and leave. Um, you know, what do you guys do within your culture to um, avoid that situation? So it's it, it's a lot of the little things, and it is it is some some time back. I had a driver I t- I was talking to outside, and I was asking him several things, and he found out who I was and what I did, and he goes, you know, he goes, it'd be really nice if we had faster internet out here in the parking lot for our trucks because we're downloading our games, downloading our stuff, and it's really slow. Oh, so like they're coming back to home base and they take that opportunity. They're sitting in the terminal to to do it. Update things. Okay. And that's before we started doing mobile data or anything like that. And so we upgraded the outside APs and the outside bandwidth so that they could have better bandwidth. And I got more thank yous over that because they were like, oh, thank you for doing that. And now they drive, some of them will drive out of their way to hit one of our terminals so they can update all of their stuff while they're there. Oh, that's incredible. It shows you care, shows you're listening. Yes. Um, and that means a lot to the to the people, for sure. Yeah, and it, it's kind of interesting in trucking because we have two sets of customers. We've got, we've got our shippers that are our customers, and then we've got our drivers that are our customers. And so, and so it's a, it's, it's a little unique. Yeah, that's an interesting way to look at it. I wanted to take a second and explain what is a manufacturer's rep. Uh, you know, it's still funny to me sometimes uh, our role is is often misunderstood. Uh, but in a nutshell, what a rep does is we are a subcontracted sales force uh, for multiple manufacturers. Um, our our lines are complementary to each other and not uh, competitive. Uh, and what this does is, you know, it often gives us uh, the opportunity to to sell a full line solution. So it really brings value to our customer when we can, uh, you know, represent product from one end to the other. Uh, we're not a distributor. Uh, you know, we work with distributors uh, to get our product to market, but we're really an extension of, of those factories. Um so just in a nutshell, if you're looking for uh, a, a great manufacturer rep with uh, years of experience and great folks, uh, look us up at cbmrep.com. Okay, so walk me through the uh, how technology has changed in the trucking industry. I, I understand, you know, you know, providing broadband to your drivers, uh, updating the log books, you know, all of those things. You got a bunch of things to track, but walk us through the progression of what it was like, you know, eight, 10, 15 years ago, however long. Walk us through the evolution of, of what technology has done from then to now for the trucking industry. So truckers have to provide <clears throat> uh, proof of delivery, different documents as they drop off loads, get loads. Okay. Uh, they have a fleet manager that would call them and say, hey, I've got this load for you, go here. They would go take the load, get the paperwork. At that point, you would they would stop at a truck stop or a, a place like that, take their paperwork and they would fax it in. So everything ran off of phone calls and fax machines. Okay, it's, so it's, I, if I'm a driver, I could have just finished a load somewhere, dropped it off. Now I call in and they're like, here, go.
go get this somewhere. Yes. So on the road, I'm dealing with paperwork. And then fax me the paperwork so okay. that we can get it billed and get it proof of delivery and everything for the drivers. Okay. Then things evolved to uh, transportation management software, which was a piece of software that would that would track all of those loads. And then as in the drivers were also doing their paper log books, then as that was mandated to electronic logs, then we started putting telematics units in the trucks. What's and, that? Uh, telematics unit is a unit that messages back and forth from the driver to the to the fleet manager that's okay. back at the office. Um, it will keep an eye on the trucks. Uh, we monitor all the points, whether it's low on oil, whether it's got too much wear on a on a brake. You can, this day and age, you can monitor the tread wear on the tires and you know that when the tires are going to need to be changed before long. And we can route them in through a maintenance center, minimal downtime, change tires, put tires back on it. Oh, that's huge. Um, we do we do telematics in the trailers so we know if the load's empty or full because we charge if if a, if we leave a trailer at a company we're we're a truckload carrier so we only deal in a full trailer we don't do okay bits and pieces uh, we leave a trailer they keep it for a long time they got it unloaded they never tell us they're done with it for us to pick it up and it's called detention we can charge them for that okay so we know by those sensors if that load has been taken off that trailer and we know we can start charging them um, the telematics in the trucks tells us if there's anything going on in the trucks to the maintenance department, uh, reports mileage, reports any hard braking, any shifts. If a driver swerves, it will send, it will alert the fleet manager. Fleet manager gets on the phone, calls the driver and goes, hey, noticed you're kind of yeah. swerving around here. Are you okay? Something going on? Yeah. And so we keep an eye on everything. We keep an eye on the RPMs, everything, the way that truck drives cameras to the front and uh, we just recently started putting cameras inward facing toward the drivers okay so what is what does that do for you uh if the driver is looking down at his phone because he's not allowed to yeah then it alerts us that he's looking at his phone gotcha and so it just it just is that uh, a special kind of cameras that is smart enough to see where like they're literally it, does, where it they're boxes facing. their head in and so it knows when they when they dip their head down or when they're when they're averted away and it keeps an eye on everything. Wow. So we're kind of the eye in the sky to the drivers. How do, how do the drivers feel? And maybe it's just old hat now, but how do they feel about, you know, just being monitored so closely? Is that S tough for some? Some drivers do not like it, but we do, uh, as I said, we do a training school. So students start in it. They start with them that way. So they're, yeah. they're, it, they're just accustomed to it. And, yeah. and everybody forgets about it after a while. That makes sense. And and, and it's really about making it easier for them. Yeah. Is what it's really about. Or And we know where they're located. So if they're having trouble getting somewhere, we can reroute them. Uh, if there's a high wind area, we can we can reroute them around the high wind and let them know that. Are you, are you able to track uh, that information back to a safer fleet? Have yes, you, absolutely. Make that we are we are uh, we are rated as one of the safest fleets in the country, uh, and all of that information, any type of an action or anything that happens, goes to our safety department, and the safety department deals with that. But yes, we're really stringent on the safety standards. Well, that's awesome. At least you get you you're able to get that info and and see. With, without see it, results. we wouldn't have any idea. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. It makes it makes all the difference in the world. So, what do you think uh, for your company? The biggest advantages of all this technology is the biggest thing. The, the technology for us is keeping the trucks up and running, keeping the drivers safe, and taking care of the drivers. So, AI's been kind of a buzzword lately, uh, and I saw an article that uh, you were quoted in that you've got uh, I think over four hundred trucks, you know, using AI now in the fleet. Um, explain to me what that means. What does AI mean to the trucking industry? So automated technology and workflows are the electronic logs, the telematics in the trucks, everything within that. We've actually been using that for a long time. And AI means more than just chat GPT-40. Okay. Uh, it, that, that it is something that we have worked with automating processes for years. So how would you define AI? I would define AI as taking a manual process 
and automating the process. Digitally somehow. With scripts, yeah. with software, to where everything does it itself. Um, I will go back, jump back just a second to the healthcare organization. We set up AI then and used automation so that all of the information from the patient flowed into the patient's record so the nurse wasn't charting the record, so she had time to take care of the patient and not worry about the charting. Okay, that makes sense. And trucking is the same way. We've automated the safety. Anything happens in the truck, the right person knows it, and we have a process to take care of it. Enhancing the process, speeding things up eliminating, more effectively. Elim eliminating mistakes, making yeah. things safer, adding safety to things because something doesn't get missed or somebody yeah. doesn't forget yeah. about something. Um, and generally making the whole thing run more homogenous and less p bits and pieces. Okay. That's awesome. What do you think's uh, one of the biggest myths regarding your position? One of the biggest myths is that an IT guy is an IT guy. And non-IT technical people always think, well, you're an IT guy, so you can do this. Here, I need you to do this. And it's like, with the advance of all this technology, you really have to be specialized. And you have to tell them, I don't know anything about that one. I'll learn it, yeah, but I don't know that. So that, that's probably the biggest myth that, that I fight. Okay. So staying in your lane, kind of, yes. if you will. Th that it takes more than one person to make all this run. Yeah. How big is your team? Oh, there's three of us. Three of you? Mm-hmm. That'll still keep you running with all the gadgets you've got to deal with. We stay pretty busy with construction and with adding the new technology. It does keep us fairly busy. Tell me a little bit more about your new facility. Is that already built or uh, still a work in progress? The administrative building is already built. Okay. Uh, that was a really fun project. Uh, we had recently divested of some West Coast operations. That company wanted our operations, but they also wanted our software and our IT. So we sold them the data center, the software, the servers, and most of the IT team to them. Okay. So then we're building a brand new building. So we got to, and this is one of the funnest things I've done, uh, I got to build an entire IT infrastructure from scratch. And it's like a marble on a flat table. We could go <laughs> any direction. And yeah. we worked on, you know, and we started with, and this is another buzzword, is let's put everything in the cloud. Yeah. And let's just not have anything on on prem. And so we looked at all of that. And then it was like, well, this can be in the cloud, but this can't. We really need this on prem. And so we ended up, we are 85, 85, 80 percent on prem, and the rest of it's in the cloud. So we ended up not being full cloud because it just did not work for us. Yeah. Uh, one of the nice things was that I'm talking about my other team, other guys that was with me. They're fairly younger, IT professionals. So we sat down and went through this exercise together to try to mentor them and get them and transfer that knowledge base of how do I start from a blank sheet of paper and how do I do this? And we did yeah. this all from the design, the procurement, the configuration, even managed all the low voltage technology and cabling in the new building and set everything up. That's awesome. That sounds like a lot of fun, actually. It was a lot of fun. My guys were like, we got to do this from scratch. And I go, you don't understand. We get to do this from scratch. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned, uh, you know, you're mentoring them because uh, obviously they're going to be taken over at some point, right? Yes. Did you have a mentor that got you started in this? I did. I had several mentors on my way, on my way through my career. And I think, and I think that's really what I would have to attribute my success to is the people that took the time to show me the right way to do things and not just go do this. To, yeah. You know, I don't want to do this. Um, the other thing you've got to do, if you don't, that is the only way to learn all of this. And if you're not training your folks and bringing people in that's going for your job, you're hiring the wrong people. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, and having the right person too, it's one thing to go, go do this, whatever this yes. is, right? But it's another thing. And I think where people really find the value is when they understand the why. Yes, and I, would I think agree with I that. think a lot of times people forget to explain that why, and then they understand and they retain that it value. better when they understand why. Yeah, rather, and they feel rather better. than type this in. Yeah, and they know. feel better about you know why they're doing it and what it means. Yes, and it gives them a little bit more uh, buy-in or 
or purpose, yeah, it, if you it, will. It, so. A lot more buy-in. I've actually, I've actually had people, uh, IT professionals that have worked for me more than once just because they want to come back and work and do what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, and that says a lot about your leadership abilities as well. So, Thank you. Um, so how do you think you're doing things differently in your role than the person before you? Uh, I think we touched on that just a minute ago. That's really similar. The person before me kept all the information to himself because he felt like if he's the one that knew it, they could never get rid of him. They could never do anything. Okay. And so he was more just an order giver. And uh, I've, I've got a completely different belief in the fact that everyone needs to be involved in it and work as a team. And they've got to know the why. They've got to know, you know yeah. what's going on with it. Um, that's probably the biggest thing that we do that I do differently than other folks. That's awesome. And that helps, uh, you know, obviously in the future for um, legacy planning, if you will, or whoever's going to fill your role. Correct. Um, yeah. yeah, it gives me a, it gives a person to replace me. And uh, when I started with this company, the owner of the company asked three things of me. He asked me to stay till I retire. He asked me to leave them better than I found them. And he asked me to have a replacement when I leave. That's a reasonable request. And I, you're honoring those wishes. I could not turn that down. <laughs> yeah. No, that says a lot about, uh, you know, their uh, culture and, you know, what's important to them. The company, the company's leadership is very forward thinking. Uh, just like the pitch on the mobile data for the trucks. You know, that wasn't something that's pervasive in the industry yet. It's like, yeah. we can do this, we can make this work. And it's like, let's go for it. That's great. I, it, you know, it sounds to me like, uh, you know, some of the things that we've talked about today and some of the some of the advancements that you're not only just making for your company, but it sounds like in the industry, um, you know, you should have people knocking down your door wanting to work for you. Um, we have a very low turnover rate. That's awesome. That, good, that says a lot. That says yes. a lot about any company. So um, awesome. Uh, well, Dan, uh, I can't thank you enough for coming in and, and visiting with us today. I've really enjoyed our conversation. I've learned a lot. You know, IT is something that's kind of a mystery to a lot of people. It is. Um, I can clearly see that you love it and you've had a, a great career and uh, super proud of what you've done. And it's been a pleasure working with you. So thank you. Thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed it. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks again for joining us today. Uh, thanks again to Dan. He was great. I learned so much today about IT and, you know, what it means to not only the trucking industry, but also, you know, hospitals and, uh, you know, further on. It's something that impacts our daily lives. And uh, it, it's just great to have an expert like him in front of us and be able to talk to him. So thanks again to Dan. Uh, you know, if you're looking for a expertise sales force, uh, need issue or need help with a project, um, you know, reach out to us here at CBM. We're always here to help. That's cbmrep.com. And uh, please comment, like, subscribe, uh, give us some feedback on the show and tell us what you'd like to hear from us next time. As always, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time on Power the Network.